This is Code.org, and this is a tougher problem for us. Um, a teacher has students in grades 1 through 5 organized in a 2D array. Yep. And they, uh, the teacher used a 2D array to line up students for the cafeteria lunch line. Ooh, I want to be line leader. Except, Kaiser, you're in the middle of the alphabet. You never got to be line leader. Except one week I filled out my planner all of the time. Students use your planners. Uh, anyways, code. Where each row represents, yep. The teacher wants to shift, wants to shift the order of students in each line by a specified amount. All right. And so the goal here is if we throw a two at our program, every student would move up by two. So if I threw a two at this, um, then Amelia, right? If I threw a two, Amelia should be right here, up one, up two. Aslan should be up here, so on and so forth. Now you'll notice guys, I already have some code here. And that's because this is a more challenging problem. I started recording this and I stopped, paused, and worked on this because I wanted to present more than one solution. And code, by the way, there is always more than one solution. You can be correct in more than one way. Now, there's efficient solutions and inefficient solutions, but that doesn't mean necessarily that one is wrong. So what I'm going to do is show you um, my first approach, which is a really common approach. It's a good approach, especially learning to program. I'm thrilled when I see a student have this answer. They understand the concept full stop. The second approach is more efficient. I would be shocked if a student had this answer. I don't expect it uh, ever because it's it's just a bit more complicated. It shows more experience in programming likely. Um, but I just wanted to make the point that there are multiple ways to arrive at a solution. And because yours looks different doesn't mean you are wrong. You might have found a better way than I did. I hope not, but you might have. All right. So that all being said, I've created a few functions here. So this is our original shift lines that they provided us that we are supposed to populate or fill out. I did a shift line slow and maybe I shouldn't say slow. It is a bit slower, but uh, maybe I should call it stan standard. It's the one I see more often. Uh, to be honest, and it's entirely correct. So let me just hit run. Right now I have a I have a three in here apparently. And let's see if I get these shifted. Oh, that's kind of hard to read. Let me throw in a blank line somewhere. Uh here. I don't know. Alright, that's a bit better. So here are the originals, and here's my results. I threw in a three, so that should mean everything shifted over by three. So Amelia was first, and now Amelia shifted up to spot three. Aslan was second, and Aslan shifted up to spot four. So from two to three to four, so on and so forth, right? So what is occurring here is I am looping through all of my values. Look at all these loops. I have a row counter and a column counter. Now, I made a lot of variables to try to make my program more readable. I also have a shift count. And what I do is each time I am moving everything by one. So if you want to move everything by three, I say, okay, let me loop through the entire array and push everything forward once. Um, and I can show this here. Let me just do a quick print at the bottom of this. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to steal you. Right here is where I'm going to print. All right, so you can see now my first run through of this. Beatrice is at the beginning, Amelia's next, and then boom, 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 boom. My, and that's what I do for each row. I shift everything up by one, and then I run through it again, and now Alexis. So I shift everything again only up by one space, but I run it by how many times I need to shift. So if I shift everything by one, but I really need to shift everything by three, I loop through the entire array, push everything forward once, loop through the entire array, push everything forward once, and eventually I get the correct number of shifts. Now I loop through how many shifts, I count, I start on the first row, go through all the rows, each row I start on that first column, and again, move things forward. I like using these variables because I think it makes it more readable. Current and next, next would be the value that we need to 
uh, save before overwriting. So maybe this could also be called temp. And what I do is first off, I say, okay, the current value, the value that I'm about to be uh, about to use will be equal to the next value. So whatever next used to be, that's the value we need to use during this iteration of the loop. Now, next is now going to be equal to what I'm going to save over momentarily. And I need these two in order to make sure I retain the information uh, to, to successfully do this. And then I set our what we're currently looking at, students row, to that current value. And I loop back around. Current is the next again, the value we just saved over. And next is the value we're about to save over, so on and so forth. So this is a pretty standard approach. There's some tweaks around the edges you could do. I could have done shift, for instance, um, within each row instead of looping through everything and doing shift on the outside. Now, my quote unquote fast approach that I do not expect students to have, I'd be a bit suspicious if they did, to be frank, but again and again and again and again, I want to show you there's more than one way with code. It's what makes code cool. So this approach is what it does is it reverses the values. So the general idea of this, and I should put comments, is that first off, that's just the row count. Uh, we reverse, so we reverse the values from the shift number to the end of the array, which in this case, since it was a three, it would just be uh, Alexis and Beatrice. So for three, it would be comma, I reverse these two and it becomes Beatrice and Alexis. Then what do I do? Here I reverse values start of the array to the shift number or shift minus one, the shift index number, I guess you could say. And then that means I'm just shifting, I'm flip-flopping Amelia Aslin and I'm going to say that wrong. So I flip these, um, Amelia would go in the middle, Aslin's going to say, and Eric, Eric, it goes here. Now, once I have all of those reversed, I reverse one more time and how I do that is I loop through and reverse everything. Now, why does this work well? Or why do I like this? Because in this approach, you only touch on each value of the array twice. Whereas here, you have to loop through the array, uh, well, every array three times if we're shifting at three. Here, the most you could ever touch a value is twice because you loop through the two parts of the array to reverse them, and then you loop through one more time the entire array to reverse all of it. Now, here's my reverse function, which I'm not going to dive into too much. We've seen similar stuff before, but wall start is less than, and I flip flop them. And let me show you that this also functions just fine. Whoa, -oh, wait a minute. Mm, oh, I forgot to comment this out. We can only run one of these at a time. Boom. And there we go. It functions just fine. So again, this is two approaches. Neither of them are right, I mean, but they both are correct. So have fun with this. When you get frustrated, it's okay. This is a frustrating problem. If you don't get frustrated, hmm, I guess you're better at programming than me. Uh, cool. Onward.